Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to tab your CPT AMA Professional Edition 2024. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so first of all, first things first, disclaimer first, I do not recommend tabbing your books. However, because of the volume of requests I get to make this video, <laughs> I will go ahead and do a demonstration on how to do it. Because if you're going to do it, you may as well do it right. However, like I say, you do not need these tabs, guys. If you are brand new and studying and you want to do this just, to, uh, just until you learn your way and then you'll take them off later, that's totally fine too. But I will tell you guys this. As soon as this video is done, oh, I am pulling these tabs right off this book. <laughs> uh, so here we go. This is the 2024, the, la the latest and greatest, because we are in April 2024, the 2024 AMA CPT Professional Edition. Now, this is the book that is required by both associations that you have when you're taking a medical coding certification exam. The CCS, the Gold Standard of Medical Coding Credentials, the CCA, the CCSP, or the CPC, they all require this particular book, okay? You have your choice of publisher on ICD-10 PCS, um, if you need that for your test, or ICD-10 CM, you also have your choice of publisher. Hicks Picks, you have your choice of publisher. But when it comes to CPT, you have to have this particular book, okay? So just letting you guys know. All right. So when we open it up, here we go. Here's all the tabs that come with this book. So I'm showing you guys this. Tabs are not allowed, like homemade tabs, if you're taking an AHIMA exam that is in the candidate hand guide. And I refuse to entertain anybody who tells me otherwise because it's in the candidate hand guide for AHIMA. Now, they say you can use the tabs if they come with the book. These are obviously attached to the book. They come with the book. You can use these, okay? Again, I don't recommend it, but for education's sake, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and put them on here. I'm going to show you guys how to do it because, again, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it right. Um, so here we go. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the first tab off. This is the E&M section. There, we're going to be tabbing first, okay? And here we go. So we have our place of service codes for claims. Great for studying, I'm just saying. Um, then we're going to get into our evaluation and management and where it starts, okay? Now, because we start here in the guidelines, yes, we could put the tab here. However, um, for efficiency's sake, we're going to put it at the beginning in the uh, tabular section, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and put it here at the beginning because rather than here at the beginning of the chapter, because hopefully by now you should have already read all of this forward and backwards and you just need to get to the uh, e &M, uh section right here. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put this little tab right here. You see where this little white line is at right here? You want to put it right there. Okay. So there's our first tab. That's going to guide us right there. We're going to use that little white thing and we're going to put it right there, okay? Now, you could put it down if you want to, but it's going to cover up that evaluation and management part, and I don't like that. So, <laughs> you're going to put it right here, and that's going to get you started, okay? Then, we're going to go over to the next section, which is going to be our anesthesia, right? So, we're going to flip back to the front, and we're going to use this tab right here, where it says A-N-E-S for anesthesia. Pull it off here. And we're going to stick it. I mean, you could put it there, but we're going to put it here so that way you can open right to the section. Okay. And we're going to put it right there. Okay. So there we go. Anesthesia. And then we have the surgical guidelines. Do we have a tab for that? Well, we do. Um, we do have a tab for that. Psst, 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 psst. But let's just go ahead and just stick with the integumentary system right here. Okay, we're going to go with integumentary system next. So here we can go integ. Now we can go ahead and put that since it's right there for surge. So we're going to put we're going to go back a little bit. But for the integumentary system, we're going to put it right here. Okay, so that it doesn't fall and cover that. Okay, let's go back to the surgery guidelines. These are your surgical guidelines right here. And we're going to put it, take surge, 
and we're going to put it right here okay so again if you want to use this time to review your book that's also great too okay um but this is going to be all of the surgery guidelines and what all is included um, sometimes I've had to use this to explain to my providers what's all included in the surgical package. <laughs> so, um, but here we go. Continuing on, we got this here. I'm going to skip over to the musculoskeletal section. So we're going to open it. See all of these wonderful illustrations. I love these. I just, I just love Opt, uh, not Optum, but, um, this AMA professional edition. Look at that. Um, and then we have our musculoskeletal. These, I'm telling y'all, if y'all would just take the time to review a lot of these sections, the coding would come a lot easier to you. Okay, I'm just saying. So here we go. Um, musculoskeletal, right here, M-U-S-C. We're going to put it right here. Bop. Okay. So then we're going to skip down to respiratory, go here, right where the section starts, respiratory. Again, a lot of wonderful illustrations here from the AMA. There we go. So... Oh, this is a little crooked. And y'all, I want to put you out of the screen. There we go. All right. Now, respiratory, more beautiful illustrations. Take the time to look at these guys because knowing where it is, like having like a visual, that's really going to help you when you're coding really going to help you. Okay. Look at this. Look how beautiful and colorful these are. I always, it always amazes me <laughs> when I look through the book and I'm doing this type of video. Here's all your arteries. Here's all your veins. Um, and here's your brachial artery and here's more of your lymphatic system. So that way you can identify where these things are. It is so important for us to understand anatomy as coders. So all right, so here we go for cardio. We put it down here. I hope the other one was in the was in view. If not, you'll get the idea. So we keep going. Cardiovascular is a big section. Not as big as the medicine section, though, but it is quite big. And then we have um, the digestive system here. So we're going to get our tab here, digestive and I'm going to put it right there. There we go. So digestive. And then we go to the next section because these are all like in color coded sections. So that's really great. So again, you don't really need the tabs, but we're just doing it for uh, <laughs> education's sake. Next is urology. So I'm going to put this here. And I'll put that right there um, okay so I'm gonna I'm not showing the whole thing because y'all y'all know what those there's a lot of drawings there and well so I'm gonna put this right here okay um, and so that's where that one goes and then this one is um, so, so that it doesn't overlap, let me see, because they put them like in the same type of place. I'm going to put this up here so that it can kind of, you have a little bit of difference there and you see how it kind of went in the middle like that. So that way it's not all like one right after another. Okay. So then we can go to the nervous system. Okay, so nervous system, we have uh, another one here for all of our nerves, the nerves and the nervous system. And then we have the brain and the different parts of the brain. Um, so we can get our tabby here. And we can put it not here, 
I'm going to put it right here. So where it opens right to the chapter, where the chapter starts. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then we have the eye ocular and adnexa. Okay. Right here. Ocular auditory. This is one right here. Okay. And we're going to put this right here. Okay. And then we have, so the auditory is covered on that one as well. Um, so there's really no need to put a tab there because we don't have one for that one. No, we don't have an extra one for that one. But if you need to, that's why they have these other ones, these spare ones. Okay. So if you really wanted one um, for the auditory one, you certainly could put it on there. Okay. Then we have our radiology section. Okay. Um, and here's all of the rules about coding for radiology and what's, what does separate procedures mean, um, unlisted procedures and special reports and written reports and that kind of thing. So this is a really great thing <laughs> to review if you're doing radiology coding. Um, so we have here rad. See how it goes red? And it is red, okay? So there is a method to their madness when they're putting this together. So we put this right get off of there right there okay using our guide there we go okay we've got radiology section all marked then we have our path and lab so path it gets kind of big too right so let's see it starts here so we have our molecular pathology gene table that is quite big <laughs> so it goes on for a little bit but we're going to skip all of that um, because you'll know that that's there, but we just want to jump to the, um, well, here's the guidelines for it, but here's the coding part. So we're going to go ahead and get our tab for path, path and lab right there. See, it's in blue. So we're going to match it up with the blue. Okay. And we're going to put it right. Can y'all see that? Okay. I'm going to put it right there. It's way at the bottom, but we're going to have to work it that way. Okay, so we got path and lab mark right there. Then we have, what is this, the medicine section? Yep, we have the medicine section. Okay, so, oh, okay. Okay, here's our guidelines for the medicine section. So before these chapters, they have their guidelines too, okay? So if you are in this, if you're coding most of these procedures that you're coding for are in this particular section that you need to review these. Okay. No matter if you think, Oh no, I don't need to review it. Yeah. You probably need to review it because there, there could be some things that would be noted that you would need to know. Okay. So here's our medicine section and then the medicine section is quite big. And so there is a few more of these tabs here. Now, um, there's one tab for it here, but they do have the breakdown of all of the different services they do, that they do have available in the medicine section. However, in the interest of time, <laughs> I'm not going to post these, okay? Uh, put these in there, okay? But we are going to mark the medicine section, all right? But you can definitely mark these sections of the medicine section should you need to, okay? Uh, so here we go for the medicine section right here. We're going to put this up here. Okay, and then see how it, see how it goes, I'm trying not to kick the thing. So it goes into like the immunoglobulins and then it goes into the more of the medicine section here and then it goes into dialysis. And so there is one here for dialysis. So if you know you're doing a lot of those dialysis procedures, you can definitely use that to mark it here. But again, I'm not gonna mark all of these in the interest of time. And then here's other ones, special services, cardiovascular. So there's more of those in the medicine section. So take the time to review the medicine section because it's quite a bit of stuff, right? Uh, physical medicine codes and rehab is back here as well. Um, so just look at all of the things that this book has to offer. And even if you take a chapter a weekend to just kind of flip through and look at it. So that way you can get really familiar. 
because as coders, we are required to know a lot, but knowing where to find this stuff in the book is really a big thing, all right? And it's gonna just make it so much easier for you to understand if you know where things are in the book. And there's so many people that are, they tell me, oh, blue, I don't know, I don't know, because they're too afraid to look at the book. And that's gonna be the biggest thing to help you, right? So here's the category two codes. Okay, so we can flip here. So, um, see category two, we're gonna get this. And we're gonna put this here. Okay, and then we're going to skip down to category three. Where does category three start? Here's category three. Okay, and it starts here. And we'll just go ahead and start it here because that's where it, exactly where the code starts. So we get the category three tabby. And there we go, category three. And we jump back to Appendix A, okay? So Appendix A is going to be all of our modifier explanations. So if you are struggling with modifiers, y'all, you have to know when these apply. And you have to know which modifiers apply to what. <laughs> because not all, uh, not all CPT codes get all modifiers, okay? Evaluation and management codes uh, definitely do not get all of these modifiers put on them, okay? So you have to really kind of understand. But Appendix A is going to tell you these definitions of what they mean and when do these apply. So if you're struggling with E&M, that's the best place for you to go. So here's going to be Appendix A and B, A through B. Here's the tabby for it. So we're going to put it right here. Okay. So appendix A through B. And B is going to tell us what the a summary of additions, deletions, and revisions for CPT. So it's going to go over that here in appendix B. Appendix C used to have the clinical examples. Now, no bueno. Okay. They don't do that no more. <laughs> uh, but... CPT did put out, um, you know, a companion thing, uh, you know, with this book, uh, but uh, I think they did it for 2024, or did they do that for 2023? I think they did it for 2023. I don't remember, y'all. I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> um, that's Appendix C used to be where they had the examples, which was really great, but they don't have that anymore because evaluation and management changed. But for Appendix C through F, it has its own little tabby. And then we're going to put that right here. Okay. So that's going to tell us C through F. Okay. And then... Ooh, I jumped too far. Okay. So there's a lot of um, more appendixes here. Appendix E is for a summary exempt from modifier 51. 51 is the uh, multiple procedures uh, uh, modifier. And then Appendix F is a summary of CPT codes exempt from modifier 63. Appendix G is the summary of CPT codes that include moderate sedation, conscious sedation. And it gives you a little passage there, <laughs> but obviously there's nothing there. So um, then we're gonna use this Appendix G through J. And put it right here okay and so the next one we need to be at would be K K through P so here's J and this is just gonna give you more um, you know of those informations and then products pending FDA approval is in appendix K that's where our next little tabby thing is so we put that right there okay K through P, and here's the vascular families, if you need to know that. Um, L, there's M, which is renumbered CPT codes in the citations crosswalk. So it'll tell you um, the current code, the deleted former code, and then the year it was deleted. So sometimes you may have to know that information and then citations referencing former code applicable to current codes it's giving you all of that information as well what do i need next q 
through T. N is the summary of resequenced CPT codes. O, appendix O. which is quite big. And here is appendix Q. Okay. So we're going to put it right here. Appendix Q through T. You had to go on there crooked, didn't you? There, okay, Q, and then we get to our index, okay. So here in the index, it's going to tell you like the main terms, the modifying terms, the code ranges, the conventions, and path and lab, and then it's going to break down like all of the the index here. So we have the index tabby right here, okay. So we go and put it right there okay so there's our index and that's it the index is it um let me make sure there's a thing okay so then we have pages for notes which you don't need to write anything in here guys trust me the whole book has plenty in it um and then we have a list of common abbreviations okay uh, so with that said take a look at this there you go and that's how you tab your books See, you see how neat that looks? So you can see everything, you can jump right to it. However, I will still say that if you are using your book, you will not need these tabs. I can't tell you how many times I um, have opened a book and literally opened to where I need to. It's scary the number of times that that happens to me, but it does happen. And it can happen to you too if you are practicing with your book like you're supposed to. But this way you can see all of your sections. There's no need to tab up here at the top. I've seen that too. I don't know why people do that, but they do. Um, but, you know, again, this will give you every everything that you need to know and you can just jump right to whichever section you need to. But I will always recommend that you guys review the book. Look at the book. The more comfortable you are with the book, the less time that you'll have to sit here and look at each one of these tabs to see where you got to go. You'll just know kind of by feel after a while, like where to go. And you'll know like, okay, well, I know I got to get to the medicine section. I'm going to go all the way, you know, to the back. Or, you know, if I'm going to get to category three codes, I'm going to go to the back. And there you go. I know if I got to go to the integumentary system, I'm going to go to the front, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal and then here is the integumentary system okay so um but that's that's it that's how you tab your book and you see there you go all nice and neat <laughs> but again try to do this without tabbing your books okay i know some people say well that's just, it, it helps me to learn blue it does okay yeah but i get it but again it's about speed and how do you get speed you get speed through practicing and the only way to do that is to have a clean book Okay, save your notes for your workbooks. Okay, save your notes for your workbooks because that's where they can apply. Not, you know, writing up and cluttering up your book or highlighting your book so badly that you can't even see anything. I've seen people who there's like a little bit of space here to write something and they're writing all in it. I'm like, why are you doing that? Because when you're in your test, are you going to have time to read your notes? No, not going to have time to read your notes either. So that's just something that you got to know. Again, if you're practicing with your book like you're supposed to, you're not going to need those notes because those notes are probably not even going to apply to anything that you're being tested on anyway, right? So take take the time to look at all of these beautiful illustrations. You know, take a weekend or so and just go over and look at all of these things. The more you put it in your brain, 
the more faster that you'll get with the coding, the more confident that you'll be with the books, because that's going to be the biggest problem right there is that sometimes when people are not confident with their coding is because they're not spending enough time with the book. At least that's, that's my advice anyway. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.